In this section, I'm going to show you how to graph the sine and cosine functions in the xy plane. So since we're graphing in the xy plane, I'm going to use the traditional x as my independent variable or argument. For the trig function and y as the dependent variable or value at the x input for each function. So, so you know, now it's going to be written in this form like y equals the sine of x or y equals the cosine of x. A uh, reason I'm doing this because here, you know, x is that independent variable. You know, it can represent an angle. You know, this could be an angle um, measured in like radians. Um, as in, you know, in calculus, usually x is just treated as some real number. Okay, so as no noted earlier, you know, in previous videos, it's equivalent to view it either way as x as an angle or some real number, All right? So either, either way, you can view it either way. In calculus, we just, you know, when we say sine x, we're talking about the sine of some real number. Okay, and we talked about domain uh, for sines and cosines. You can plug in any real number you want and there'll be some output y value. So what we're gonna do now in this video is show you, you know, what, what those outputs, what the graph actually looks like if we were to plot all those locus of points. Okay, so because the sine function has a period of two pi, so let's focus on sine right now. So we know that there is a period of two pi so after so what does that mean after we rotate after we go 2 pi out then the cycle repeats itself okay so it's really only necessary to graph on the interval from 0 to 2 pi because once we get to 2 pi then we know that the cycle is going to repeat itself okay so let's just begin, let's, any, anytime you're going to graph something, you've got no idea what it looks like, it's good to start with a table. So x and then sine x, right? So let's do, let's just fill out a table. So when I plug in zero, well, what do I get? I get zero. Sine is zero, zero. If I plug in pi over six, what do I get? I get one half. If I plug in, um, pi over 2, what do I get? I get 1. All right, if I plug in 5 pi over 6, okay, 5 pi over 6, um, this is like going around the circle. We go all the way around to right here, and so it's symmetric. That's 1 half, so this is also 1 half, okay? Um, if I plug in pi, that means I go all the way around, so the y value is 0 over there. Um, 7 pi over 6. Okay, that's a little bit further down. That's negative 1 half. Um, 3 pi over 2. If I go all the way around to right here, the y value is negative 1. Uh, 11 pi over 6, that's just shy of being over here, so that's still a negative 1 half. And then going full circle back to 2 pi, I get back to 0. So what does this look like if I just take this and I try to plot these dots? Okay. So let's mark, let's mark our axes. So let's do 1, 2, 3... Four, okay, so this is going to be pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi, right? And then 
The biggest my value gets is one. So I need to go up to one here. And the smallest my value gets is negative one. So I need to do negative one down there. All right, so let's graph this. So first dot is at zero, zero. That's my first dot. Then I go over pi over six and then up one half. Okay, and then um, by the time I get to pi over two, I'm at one, one, or at one here. And then as I go a little bit further, I come, I'm starting to come back down again. And then by the time I get to pi, I'm back to zero. And then, you know, between pi and three pi over two, I'm like halfway down again. And then here, when I get to three pi over two, that's at negative one, going over there, <clears throat> and then back up to one, negative one half here, and then I complete it. So if I connect these dots, what does this look like? My sine curve kind of looks like this, and it's got a, got a wave in it, okay? So this is what the sine curve does, and now, if I copied this, all right, if I copied this and I extended through, I would continue this on forever and ever and ever and ever, all right? So you could continue this. It's just it's just one period of 2 pi. I just copy and paste this on and on and on and on, and it just goes on forever and ever um, in whatever, you know, as far as you want to go, any x value you, you can think of to plug in. All right, so this is y equals sine of x um, for uh, 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so we just cut it off here for one, um, one period through the cycle. Okay? So um, let's think about some properties that are... Um, in this graph, all right? So the graph illustrates some interesting facts, okay? The domain, what values of x can we plug in that output a real number? Well, any value, any real number you can think of, I can take the sign of that real number, so the domain is all real numbers. However, the range is restricted, okay? The range, the output, the y value, the biggest my sine value gets is one. The smallest my sine value gets is negative one. It's always stuck in between one and negative one. So the range is between negative one and one, okay? So inclusive, meaning we include those values. We actually obtain those values <clears throat> at odd multiples of pi over two, okay? So the, the sine function is an odd, an odd function. So um, y equals the sine of x is an odd function. Okay, um, what does that mean? That means that sine of negative x equals negative sine of x, All right? That's an odd function definition. Okay, as the symmetry of the graph with respect to the origin, all right? So that means it's symmetric about the origin, okay? So this graph is symmetric about the origin. All right, um, what else do we have, okay? The sine function's periodic, okay? So it's periodic. Okay, periodic with uh, 2 pi as the period, All right? It takes 2 pi radians to cycle through the whole period, All right? Um, X-intercepts, do we cross the x-axis? Yes, we cross the x-axis infinitely many times. Where do we cross the x-axis? So that's 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, so, so x-intercepts. X-intercepts are what? They are um, multiples 
of pi, okay, so k pi, where k is some integer, so it's like dot, 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 negative 2 pi, negative pi, 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and forever and ever, right? You just, you just keep going. You can play that game as long as you want to play it. Okay, not telling you to play it that long, all right, but you could if you wanted to. <clears throat> all right. Um, maximum value attained. Well, where do we attain our maximum values? We obtain the maximum values at pi over 2. Okay. When will we obtain it again? If we keep cycling through, we'll obtain it again over here. If I add pi over 2 to 2 pi, which I think would be 5 pi over 2. So that's where that would be located if I kept going. So maximum occurs at um, pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. 9 pi over 2, and so on and so on. But it also, you know, it doesn't just work one way. It goes the other way as well, right? So you could have negative 3 pi over 2, and then negative 5 pi over 2, and uh, so on, right? Kind of like that. All you're doing is you're just adding 2 pi to get to the next one, add 2 pi. To get to the next one, add 2 pi. Get to the next one, add 2 pi, and so on, all right? Remember, it's a periodic 2 pi, so you just need to add 2 pi's to get to the next hump, okay? So to get to the next value that's equal to that value, add 2 pi to it. Same with the minimum. The minimum value, the minimum value looks like it's at 3 pi over 2. All we got to do to get to the next one is add uh, 2 pi, so that gets me 7 pi over 2. Add 2 pi again to get 11 pi over 2, and keep going. You can play the game forever, and then going the other way, subtract 2 pi, gets you negative pi over 2, and you can keep going forever and ever. So those are all my minimum values there. Okay, so this kind of summarizes... You know, some important characteristics of the sine curve. Okay, so graphing functions. So let's talk about graphing functions of the form y equals a sine omega x. Okay, so a number in front of the sign. And then the, inside the argument, we have a number, a coefficient in front of the x using transformations. So what I want to do first is I want to graph, okay, I want to graph y equals 3 sine of x, okay, using transformation. So how are we going to do this? Well, um, the domain, what values I can plug in, that doesn't change, the domain is still negative infinity to infinity. However, the range does change. Okay, the range is changing. Why is the range changing? Well, sine, we know sine of x is stuck between one and negative one, right? So if I multiply by three, what's that gonna do? That's gonna make this stuck between negative three and three, okay? So the range, is between negative three and three. So the range did change. So, so looking at our graph, all right? So our sine, our typical sine curve looks like this. Okay, so maybe this is out at two pi. That's at zero. And so it goes up one and down negative one, right? Now, what did we change here? So that was, that was, um, y equals the sine of x. What about um, 3 sine of x like we've got here? Well, instead of 
um, stopping here, I need to go up a lot higher, right? It goes three here, and then it goes down to negative three here. So my peak comes up to three here, but it still gets pulled back down to zero, because zero times three is still zero, right? And then here my peak was negative one. Well, my trough here is negative three down here, so that pulls me all the way down here. And then I get pulled right back in here. And so really the only thing that's different, the period isn't changing, but the amplitude is changing, okay? So this, this point right here is pi over two comma three, whereas that point there is pi over two comma one, okay? This point here <clears throat> was three pi over two, one, and this point down here was three pi over two, negative three. All right, now, if I, instead of changing this outside number, A, this amplitude, maybe instead I change the inside number, that omega W here, okay? So maybe I wanna to try to graph um, Y equals the negative sine of 2X. The negative sine of 2X. Okay, so using transformations, you know, you can use the graph to determine the domain and the range. Well, the domain, I can still plug in any real number and it's multiply that real number by two and it's a real number and I'll take the sign of that real number and it's still a real number. So the domain is the same, okay? <clears throat> Negative infinity to infinity. The range is also the same, right? The range is also the same. Now, um, with this particular one here, okay, um, the negative reflects it across the uh, x-axis, but this two inside here, this has a horizontal compression factor going on, all right? So the domain and the range here um, are actually the exact same as the original sine function, negative one to one, okay? And so the way I can illustrate this is through the picture Okay, so let's draw the picture. Here's my sign. Okay. So that is the, that's a y equals the sine of x. Now, if I was going to graph um, y equal to the negative sign of x, I flip it flip it across the x-axis. So this is y equals the negative sine of x. So I've literally flipped it. So that's at one, this is at negative one. Okay, so this is pi over two. All right, um, if I multiply by two on the inside here, what's happening? This multiplying by two, doing a two X, actually increases that, uh, or, or it shortens the period by half. So now all of a sudden, that uh, replacing X with two X in the argument is a horizontal, compression by a factor of one half. Okay, it's a horizontal compression by a factor of one half. What does that mean? The period goes from two pi and it gets compressed down to pi. Okay, so this is the new period. 
for sine of 2x, okay? Now, I want to do the negative of that. So what's happening here? Instead of it taking all the way to 2 pi to get my full cycle through, what's going to happen is I'm going to get the full cycle crunched up all the way, and it's going to be done at pi, okay? So the graph is going to become, so here it's at pi, so I'm going to shrink it all the way to right there, okay? So from negative one to one here, and this is pi over two, and this is pi, okay? So it just, it just makes it, instead of being spread out like this, you know, we're, we're uh, going, we're compressing it, you know, really quickly, okay? So a lot, a lot more is going on in a shorter amount of time. It's like we're taking a stretched out spring and pushing it inward, okay? All right, let's now, um, we'll stop this video and then we'll do um, the cosine, do the cosine function. Okay, same thing for the cosine function coming up.